This is your main man, Andrew Wood, with the legendary Mark Ryan Higgins. Today, we're going to be talking about character creation for I Am Zombie. The first ever look into this game to this level, giving you the world premiere, the sneak preview that you deserve right here, Barbarian Horde. So, we're going to be examining the cards, what the cards mean, and how your main man put his character together. And you want to learn more about this, come back on Sunday at noon, see Mark Ryan Hagen making weird faces like this, and we're going to be playing world premiere on my channel, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, I Am Zombie. You will see this character, who I've given you all the information about, you'll see Mark Ryan hanging with a Tongan uh, thumb of fear, and you're going to be seeing, absolutely, and you're going to be seeing the game in play, you're going to be seeing how it works, the, the, the mechanics, Mark Ryan Hagen's storytelling, aptitudes, you're going to be seeing a role play from my Self and from the gentleman Matthew Dawkins, and we're going to be bringing it, and uh, that's going to be again at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Okay, let's talk about the character that I created. His name is Barry Stillwater, and I looked at the cards. Mark sent me this big sheet of beautiful cards, and he's still going through the process of changing some things around. We're we're in the play testing phase here. You understand, people? This is not a game that's out and available yet. When I do these videos, about 30 of you are going to ask, how can I buy this? Well, you could wait until June when we look like the Kickstarter is going to be out. And don't worry, Mark will be back. We'll be talking about it. And you see some of the cards right here. Now, I looked at the sheet that, that Mark sent me right off the bat. I'm like, eh. And then I went down. I was like, eh. And then I went down. I was like, eh. And then I went down, and I saw a card called Carney. And my eyes lit up. Uh, I'm not going to do my Carney yet for you, but you best believe your main man speaks Carney. And this guy right here, uh, a, a beast of imagination, was opened to me, and I began to explore that. I'd already picked up, before my, my descent there, I picked up Daredevil. Uh, as well, but but before I go through all the cards, Mark, why don't you go ahead and tell them what you'd like to tell them about? It's a little shot of Daredevil there as well. How can you not pick her? Uh, but why don't you go ahead and tell them a little bit about a little bit about Carney, Mark, and 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 the genesis. Yeah, first of all, I just want to say that these are prototype cards. The actual cards will be beautiful. Uh, you know, I was part of the whole uh, Wizard of the Coast uh, thing. I was an owner and a board director. I know how to do cards. I know how to make things beautiful. These are prototype cards. Please, please do not write me saying your art sucks. This is not actually even what the art final will look like. Anyway, uh, Carney. The idea of Carney is that each card is an archetype. To create a character, the back of the deck of cards will simply say, pick eight cards. And you'll just pick eight cards, and the first deck is the human deck. It's all the human stuff. And the way you play this game is, of course, you start as a human. And uh, so you pick eight cards, and these cards can be things like Carney. And you could be a Carney right now. You could interpret it as you were once a long time ago a Carney. It could be that your parents were Carneys. You grew up in the Carney world, but you were never a Carney. Or it could just mean that you're a wannabe carny who's read a lot about it. <laughs> you can interpret this card any way you want. But, but any way about it, you know these things about carny. So, you're a carny and you have these skills. By the way, is this backwards in your screen? Or my screen is all backwards. Uh, I think it will come across. I think it will be, but it will come across well enough. Uh, okay. So, if you're a carny, your skills are uh, bullshit, stealth, and lawless. So bullshit, of course, means you're good at talking people into shit and uh, avoiding the truth. Stealth means you're good at sneaking around. And uh, lawless means you're good at uh, knowing what the law is and breaking it. And then you also have underneath your uh, advantages and your disadvantages. And the cool thing about these is that if you use your disadvantages in play, you get rewarded with, we'll talk about this later, your bump chips. So if you use a disadvantage, you get rewards. And advantages are just things you can bring up to the narrator and say, hey, I got this. So if you're a carny, number one, you speak carny. Uh, and you know everyone in the biz. Uh, and you even have keys to a few attractions. And you're able to win almost any carny game to show it's not fixed. <laughs> And then uh, your uh, disadvantages are you're an obsessive hustler and uh, and hustler, hustler and huckster, and you always need to run a scam. 
Yeah, so that, as you can see right off the bat, drew me in. It's got the big Rob Zombie-looking guy. At a, back when I used to have hair, you guys will never believe it, I actually used to look like a picture on that card. Um, so, yeah, that, that, yeah, I had that much hair. Well, I had more of the hair than that guy, believe it or not. You'd never guess now, but it was the truth. Um, I had hair, too. Yeah, yeah. Even I have more than you do now. Um, yeah, the, the, the Rob Zombie-looking guy, so that, that's, that's nice. But actually, the very first card I picked up was Daredevil. Because Daredevil gives you that wonderful cinematic feeling, that flair. I didn't have the the concept, the genesis, the uh, character nailed down. And I said, well, Daredevil, let me just put that to the side. Let me see if I can integrate that in whatever the idea comes. And I, it, it definitely could. And we'll talk about what that was later. But, Mark, why don't you go and talk a little bit about Daredevil? What, what, do, we get, what do we get when we select that card, Daredevil? Uh, Daredevil, um, you get uh, um, three uh, traits. You get uh, athletics, pretty useful for Daredevil. Absolutely. Dodge, if you've ever watched uh, as much uh, Jackass as I have, you'll know that uh, that's pretty important. And then uh, also Guts. And Guts is being able to do things you don't really want to. So those, those uh, you know, when we made these cards, we didn't ever, ever, ever uh, do anything like try to make them fit some pattern that we needed this to have happen. Each of these cards has exactly the three traits that describe that character best. Uh, and so this is Daredevil, Jackass, uh, stunt person. And your, uh, your advantage is you're a member of a team of amateur stunt performers who will do anything for a dare. And you're able to plan out stunts and given time can pull off some pretty major feats. Your drawbacks, you're obsessed with movies, filmmaking, trumps real life. You're addicted to danger and risk-taking, which in a role-playing game <laughs> can mean you're in trouble because another player can go, hey, doesn't he have He's addicted to risk-taking? You've got to be the first one to go in the room. He gets a chip, and you got to go in first. Yeah, so, absolutely. So this is a double-sided card, which all cards are. The idea is in this game is that there is no character sheet. Your character is your cards. And now you can stack them in different ways. You can have three different stacks. You can move them around between scenes. But, but this is your character, you know? There's no character sheet. That's Stone Age. Character sheets are Stone Age stuff, man. Board games haven't had, like, writing down of stuff since... Since the eighties, <laughs> when, when's the last board game that had you write down something? That's that's not that's old fashioned, man. We got to move to the future, and that's what we're trying to do with the system. Yeah, and I can tell you guys. I know a lot of you after the first video we did about I Am Zombie had questions, had 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 uh, unsettled ideas. How is this going to work? And I, from putting them together, the system so far we've been. I haven't played it yet. Well, that'll be corrected very soon, but it looks like it's going to work very well to bring forward the actual fluidity of role playing. That, that's what we want to have that, that fluid, uh, immersive experience. That's largely what I chose my cards around. What's going to give me cinematic flair? What's going to let me test and push the boundaries of Mark's system so that if there are uh, any, any undetected problems, maybe we can find some of those out. We can see how it supports and, and lends to uh, that style of play. So, that card was uh, definitely one I wanted to have for system exploration as well as just overall cinematic appeal. The next one, <laughs> the next one, you know you saw this card. Your main man's going to grab this one. A card probably not a lot of people are going to get. A card not a lot of you out there are going to believe. I, I, You will believe that I selected this card immediately. I saw it. It never wavered in my mind. I was going to have Pyromaniac. Talk about it, Mark. Pyromaniac. Uh, yeah, I love this card, too. <laughs> Wonderful. And, uh, you know, I definitely have a, uh, you know, an affection, a deep and abiding affection for guns and, and uh, you know, blowing things up and uh, fire. And uh, uh, I just get it, man. That's, you know, I, I've never, ever been a pyromaniac, but I, I love the concept. So from Pyromaniac, you have three traits. You have explosives, stealth, and, of course, rage. Okay? <laughs> and if you're a zombie, by the way, rage is pretty useful. Uh, don't think it's a throwaway trait. It's not. And uh, your advantages are you know how to start fires without leaving any evidence. 
Uh, and you also know how to combine household supplies to make combustibles. Also kind of useful. Oh, yes. <laughs> Especially in a role-playing game. Uh, and then your uh, drawbacks. Um, you love to start fires and do it obsessively. So, yeah, if another player pops out and goes, oh, wow, you... narrator, did you mention abandoned building? <laughs> now, of course, if the other players are smart, they're not going to do that. But if they're if you give them a wink because you know a combat's coming up, they're going to need that bump ship. Maybe they'll mention it. They'll get the bump ship, and then you'll make a fire. You know, it's all a matter of balancing out what you need to do. You know, role playing and the game side. You know, uh, and then finally, uh, always playing with fire, even if it's just a lighter. So you have this annoying habit of you're always flicking on your lighter. You know, it's not a good thing. <laughs> But I love the Pyromaniac card. And once again, the Pyromaniac card could mean anything. It could mean that you're actively a Pyromaniac right now. It could mean you went to jail and you're no longer a Pyromaniac at all. Uh, and by the way, uh, on the cards, you can cross out one drawback as long as you cross out an advantage. So you can personalize the cards. Uh, if you want, you can add your own. You could, you could basically add your own drawback and advantage, put in a sleeve, have a little piece of paper in there and describe your own drawback and advantage. But you know, but mainly people just be crossing out stuff. They'll put the card in a sleeve, they'll cross out a drawback, and personalize it slightly. Um, and, but the idea is you can turn it in anything. You know, you're not a pyromaniac now, or you're a wannabe pyromaniac. You've never quite done it yet. But you're clearly on the verge. Yes, and speaking of that, what Mark talked about, where pyromania might lead you, the only, there was one part of the, 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 the process that was a hard call for me. He has two cards. One of them is called XCon, and the other one is called Men, uh, Mental Asylum or... Uh, Mental, escape mental patient. Escape mental patient. That was the hardest choice for me. If I would be an escaped mental patient or I'd be an ex-con. We have the pyromaniac. We have the carny. I, I'm a degenerate. Let's face it. So how has that gone wrong? And I had I had the uh, escape mental patient for a while, but I ended up going ex-con. And you're going to see some of the other selections I have, and you're going to see that in spades. So we, we already mentioned it, Mark. Let's go to ex-con. So I want to mention, by the way, that these pictures yes. that will be on the cards, these are obviously not the final pictures, as I said, but even when you have the final pictures, they're not the pictures of you. They're a picture of a friend. The way we ask players to imagine it, this is a picture of a friend that you had when you were in jail. And so later on, players are allowed to point out this person and go, by the way, everyone, this is my contact, and I'm going to call on my contact. And you can give a name to this person, and as a person you can call on as a, as a resource. Okay. And so every part of the card has a purpose, it has a reason. And, and you can use it in the role playing. So this picture is not you, but this could have been your, your, your uh, jailmate. Yeah. Okay? So uh, this card, you have Lawless, go figure. So it sounds like you have two Lawless already. Yeah. We've only gone through some of the cards. So. You're pretty good at uh, doing uh, bad things. Weapons, that's not guns and shit. That's like knives and everything. But that's very important in the zombie world. Know how to use a shiv or a knife or better yet a sword to cut someone's head off. Very important in zombie combat. Because bullets do minus two successes of damage. They're not so useful. And then rage. So you're good at rage as well. That's your second rage thing. Rage is good because it means you can ignore the deterious effects of being a zombie. And then uh, you, your advantages are you have an important piece of information. You learn it on the inside, but it's very valuable on the outside. You have a piece of information, maybe where the you know the where all the money from the armored car was buried, <laughs> or uh, or or something else. Uh, also, criminal lore, you have ex extensive contacts in the criminal underworld. And disadvantages, uh, you have a pain in the ass probation officer. And two, you owe favors to people in the joint. 
Bar. Well, you talked about lawless. Another attribute of my ex conneriness my degenerate behavior, my low life aspect is cat burglar. That's right. I'll break into your house and take your shit. What you got now, Mark? What do you got about cat burglar? Cat burglar, man. That's one of my favorite tropes ever. And keep in mind that what we're trying to do with these cards is create archetypes. And and you know, games commonly have archetypes. And in fact, in the first edition of Vampire. I had a uh, nature and demeanor, which use archetypes to kind of describe a character. And that was actually my favorite part of the whole system. And, uh, but it wasn't used fully enough to be left in the system in later games. And then, of course, later in Vampire, uh, the new version, uh, uh, they took it out. But I love this because I think our playing archetypes is very important because that's really what we're doing in role playing is that we're sort of channeling some moment in a movie, some trope, and uh, that's it. So any cat burglar is a classic. And I actually uh, met a cat burglar once in a bar in Philly, and uh, we had quite a night. Uh, uh, I actually sat outside. I should be saying this. We're lying. <laughs> anyway, I didn't do anything bad. I was in my own car. I was thinking about calling the cops, but, uh, yeah, he was showing me some shit. And uh, where he take heisted people, I didn't. I wasn't part of any heist. Anyway, it was a fascinating night, and I know very much about cat burglars. Mark, not that, I, not that I am not that I'm, <laughs> not that I'm supporting his way of life, and I never met him again. But it was a great night. Okay, so uh, your your traits are stealth, obviously, lawless, and deft. So now you have a two uh, stealth and a three lawless. You're definitely uh, got a specialization. This character is very much of a, in D and D terms, you're making a, a thief type character, uh, and and uh, I think you have a, yeah, already you're up to four dice on uh, lawless man. You can pick pockets. You can do all kind. Of, you can break into houses. You're really pretty good. You get one more uh, dexterity or one more uh, uh, lawless, and you'll be kick-ass, man. And I believe that I have one more lawless coming up. So let's uh, let's run through these. Yeah, let's take a look because we're looking for one more lawless, right? Let's take a look at outlaw biker. I don't know if I have it there, but let's let's take a look. Outlaw so, biker. All right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I told you I was a scumball. <laughs> Yeah, so um, oh, I don't have lawless there. Uh, this version, no, but I believe the new version, yes. Oh, do I? Okay. Yes, yes. So anyway, uh, you got drive, obviously. Yes. Uh, weapon, because uh, I guess we're changing. That's the weapon changed to lawless and vigor. So you're tough as nails. And uh, your advantages are you're um, the outlaw biker, the rebel, Hell's Angel. You're a member of a feared motorcycle bang gang who back you up and provide access to all things illegal. And you own your own cool motorcycle. Oh, yeah, baby. All right. Uh, humans dislike you. Police harass you. You have an enemy biker gang. How fun. I think that could provide a lot of interesting game hooks right there. And that's always what you want to do with these cards. You want to make sure you have hooks. You want to make sure that the, the person running a game always has something they can do with you. They can throw you in there and get the scene popping. And uh, some of these cards are just loaded with different ideas there. Uh, for me, also drive, one of those great skills to have because it gives you so much cinematic cachet. I love to have, I love to have that. So I, I had to grab that outlaw biker. And we're going right over to it on the, on the sheet I have in front of me. Outlaw Biker is right beside Street Hustler, Mac. So why don't you tell them about the Mac, uh, Mark? All right, Street Hustler. He's a, he's a badass, man. He's playing three-card Monty. Yeah. He's making a living, man. Uh, you know, big Did part you show of the game. picture. Huh? Did you show him the picture of that guy? Yeah, I, I love this picture. And uh, a big part of this game is inspired by The Wire, which I think is the greatest TV show ever and really expresses kind of what, what is great about America and what is really screwed up about America. 
And it just shows the side of America that most people never see. Most people think they're all about the street. They know about the street. They don't know nothing, man. And, uh, you know, if you haven't been to Compton, you haven't been to West Side Baltimore, uh, you know, you haven't been to the Bronx, you, you, you know, you don't really know those cities, man. You don't know them. And uh, street hustlers are some of my favorite people. I love watching people hustle around. And uh, this card is inspired by bubbles. If you know the wire, you know what I'm talking about. Love bubbles. Always out to make a buck, smart guy. So uh, here you have uh, street, which is like uh, streetwise, you know, it's your ability to know what's going on in the street. Uh, bullshit, really valuable uh, uh, trait. I'm hoping that the, the morality police don't make me change that name because I love the name bullshit. And then dexterity. Just, you know, slide a hand, baby. And uh, Street Hustler's got three event got the advantages of can find anything, can buy or sell anything on the streets. Just knows where to buy and knows where to sell. Uh, and then you have a lot of seedy underworld contacts. <laughs> you just know people. And then disadvantages, uh, you're held in contempt by anyone who's not from the streets. Street people respect hustlers. They do. Anyone not from the streets does not respect street hustlers. They don't. And then it's sad because they're smart and they're cool. Uh, and then uh, doesn't flit into polite society. And then last but not least, a street hustler always has bad luck. And what that means is up to the players and the narrator. But that can get you in trouble. I absolutely love the trait bad luck. I think it's... It's a great shape. For me, the greatest game currency your character can have is hooks, things that have the game master go to you, you know, get you spotlight, get you time, get things happening with your character, good or bad or different, whatever, as long as it, it progresses moving forward, interjecting you into the game. Those are the things I look for. So I'm like, oh, it's a disadvantage. It's going to get me more playing time. Wonderful. It's going to have interesting things happen. Who cares if you slip with a banana peel and go down? As long as it's described cool and you can make something out of it, things like that are wonderful. So I, I, I really enjoyed that card. And it makes sense with the carny, with the, with a biker, with the ex-con, with the cat burglar. He knows streets. He knows how to talk to people, how to hustle people. He's a low life. He's held it. Absolutely. Oh, I, I think go ahead. Sorry. And, and, and the thing is that it could be something you did when you're 14. Like, like you may not bother doing it very much before, but you know what? If you learn a, a powerful skill that interact, has you interact with adults at 14, you never forget that. And that's what the skill can represent. But later on, this card is worth, each of these um, first cards are worth two um, character points each. And you get one character point per game session experience from which you could buy new cards. So let's say you go on a game session, you want to buy a four-point card, and you don't have enough points. You can get rid of this card, and then plus the two points you gave in the last two game sessions, you can buy a new card. So in this game, you can, your character could laterally change. Basically, you still have this history that you're a street hustler, but you've just kind of forgotten that part of your life and therefore forgotten the the skills you gained from it, the traits you have, and then also the advantages and disadvantages. You've moved on. But then later on something can happen and you buy back the card. You know, so so that so I think one problem with role playing has always been is that unlike in real life or the movies or fiction, is that characters in role playing tend to only grow upwards. They only grow up. And that's not how characters grow. Characters change and transform sideways as well, you know? And I think that's a very important to show. And in this system, you can do that. You can change your character over, if you play this often, over, over 15 game sessions, you can completely transform your character. And that happens in real life sometimes, doesn't it? We've all lost friends <laughs> who've gotten married and completely changed their lives. For the better or for the worse. Yeah, that certainly is true. I think, for me, it's definitely a large part of the character is looking at where am I now? Where am I going? Maybe. Uh, and so, 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 what does it look like? Where's the glue? So, creating sort of those spaces in between the cards. How does card A connect to card B? Connect to to, to card eight, and and putting them together really 
kind of pushes you to design that, to come up with a character. It's, it's a very different sort of design than you have in a game where you roll stats and base around those stats or where you have a point buy and you build around that concept. It, it forces you to build characters in a very different way. And there's a lot of building room in those spaces between the cards, which can really produce some very different concepts, even from exactly the same uh, cards. If you grab the same eight cards I have here, you can make a very different character. Uh, add, <clears throat> I like Mark talked about the early parts, the, the, the current parts. What are you doing? When did you learn that skill? How much you use it now? And so forth. So for me, I have this guy affiliated with these bike gangs, this road with bike gangs, that's worked in and out of carnies, that's drifted in and out of prison, who uh, supplements his income by going and breaking into people's houses, taking their shit, maybe burning their house to the ground after the fact that they've really pissed him <laughs> off. And after all, he's marked you as a mark and the carny. He's followed you home. He's seen you. He's seen your stuff. And out to the next town he goes with the oh, carnival, shit. with the bike gang, what have you. And now, see, we have this devious mind, this individual who, who could work there, who's worked the system and knows how to work you. He has abilities on the street. He has abilities to hustle, to, to, to know you. You could look at him right off the bat and don't like him, and you'll like him a lot less when he comes into your house and burns it down and takes your shit. Uh, but where did he come from? Mark talked about what about the past, and this character came from a, a, a card, and I've had Mark talking about all these, but this one trait I have to mention because it is so quintessentially me. It's called Buckwild Hillbilly, and it is the redneck. That is the character's roots, his past, his background, his family. Mark, talk about the redneck. Uh, I love this card because yes, uh, love well, it. Well, when uh, Shane died on Buck Wild, I was pretty upset. I didn't want to watch that show, and I didn't watch that show. And finally, I watched the show, and I actually fell in love with that kid, Shane. He was just awesome. I, I would have been his best friend in high school. And when he died, I was kind of upset. And um, But anyway, um, I've had many redneck friends in my life, and I, I actually love the redneck lifestyle, uh, actually. Um, you know, I love going mudding. <laughs> I love kegger parties in the woods. I grew up in the country. I grew up kind of a redneck a little bit, I guess. Although Minnesota's not really redneck like it is in the south. But, you know, there's rednecks everywhere. And uh, I don't drive a pickup truck anymore. Well, actually, I never did. But uh, I wish I had but sometimes. But anyway, redneck has a uh, jury rig, uh, has uh, explosives, and has guts. And uh, explosives is one of the ones we're kind of going, come on, does a redneck have explosives? And then we're like thinking, you know what, if anyone has explosives, a redneck has explosives. Because, you know, in the countryside, you can blow off bombs and no one ever knows. So you know more about fuses and timing and all that kind of stuff much better than anyone else. So um, your advantages are you have a large family back home with a cabin in the woods. Very useful. Cabin in the Woods. That's almost as useful as a survivalist card, which has a bunker in the woods. Almost as good, not quite. Uh, access to wide assortment of guns and explosives. Highly useful. Disadvantages. You're uncomfortable in the city, you're out of place, and you stand out in fancy places, which from your character you describe, which, which by the way, was, was very different from what I thought, but it, I really understand that. You're a carny that, that picks out your marks. Well, they, I'm, ne I'm never going to a circus again. I'm worried they're going <laughs> to, this guy's going to follow me home. And uh, you should be. And then, uh, and this fits you, you to a T, uh, uncontrollable potty mouth, foul language in every sentence. Not every redneck is like that, but later on, we'll have a polite redneck card you know we'll have the Alabama redneck card we'll have the Mendocino County redneck card <laughs> the southern gentleman yeah well I mean the idea is eventually to have lots of different cards and, and once again I want to uh, make everyone aware that I you know we have play testers who are just writing down like main man here just just have a card he's gonna for the play test he's not gonna even print out the cards he's just gonna write it down on uh, uh, the the name and the the traits on a uh, on a post-it card. It'll take him five minutes, but he has his cards, you know. Yeah, and I believe this was the uh, for what you told me, Mark, the seventh character ever made for I Am Zombie is from a yes. player standpoint. 
Yeah, at the time you made it, it was the seventh character. Now we're up to much more. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, and, and that is the idea of this, is that I really want role-playing to grow. I mean, this is my favorite, this is not only my favorite hobby, role-playing is my favorite art form. And I just gave this TED speech on how gaming, but especially role-playing, is this powerful art form, and it kills me there's not that many young people playing anymore. And so, really, this game system designed so that you can just basically give a deck of cards to a friend and say, pick eight cards, and then we'll play a game. And literally, you know, it's just as easy to play as a board game. You give your friend character some cards, you pick some cards, and you start playing. It's as easy as that. And then also, we're going to do the troop-style play, where if someone doesn't show up, it doesn't matter. You can still play a game. You know, because I want role playing to let last. I want it to work, and it's got to work within the strictures of our world, which is everyone's busy, and no one has time to learn new rules all the time. You know, unless you're a hardcore gamer, but most of us aren't. Most of our friends aren't, at least. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a very important thing to get the gaming community, the gaming world to grow, to get people excited and immersed in the game. I completely agree with you about role-playing being a wonderful art form. I've said that many, 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 many times here. And your main man uh, definitely is very excited and jacked about this uh, opportunity to, to see exactly what happens. And like I said, I've made a slime ball, a degenerate, a dirty guy, and you're going to you're, you, you're gonna come to love him. I'll tell you that right now. He's going to be that character you hate, and then you just... You, you just, yeah, I'm going to get the sympathy on him. I'm going to get it over, and it, it's going to be real interesting to see how that comes apart, to see if I do, in fact, get my just come up it and become a zombie, if I am able to avoid that fate, uh, however that might come. There, besides the cards I picked, there are a load of them. There are also zombie-only cards. 100 cards, 112 cards. I mean, there, there's a ton of them. And remember... You know, you could take seven of the cards I had and then interject one other card and have something really completely different. And this is like Mark said, that's only... A like shifty lawyer. A shifty lawyer. That's only way, I, want to, I want to point out, you have no purple cards. None. Yeah, I didn't take any. So your, your, dis your disadvantage is built in your character and you didn't even know it. Yeah, what is my disadvantage not having purple cards? Your disadvantage is, is that when you roll cards... You can only roll when you have your when you roll dice. Uh -huh. There's four different color dice. Yeah. There's blue, red, purple, and green. And if you have you can, you can basically only get as many successes as you have that color dice. So if you have no purple dice, you can't get mental successes. You're you're crafty and you're <laughs> slick, but you're not that uh, educated or smart. So one use of a mental dice is that when you make rolls during a scene, you could roll mental dice along with your mayhem dice, which is your red, or your physical dice, which is your blue, or your social dice, which is your green, and when you roll mental dice, each success you can put aside. And that takes away a one later on if you want to in a key scene. Uh, so okay. you are unable to put away mental dice and save them up. Everyone else can. You can. Not me. Well, I, I like having an exaggerated flaw in that, so I think that's awesome. But I will say this. Your character, Mark, your NPC that comes against me, now he may have mental attributes, but I have four explosions, and that blows your body <laughs> apart. Listen, when, when, when Bleach comes and gets you and uh, brings you to the formerly free city of Detroit, which has now become the quarantine city of Detroit, uh, they're going to have no idea what they just run into. I think <laughs> that, yeah. An aerosol yeah. can and a lighter to the face is what that <laughs> runs. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I think every trip to the gas station bathroom on the way to Detroit from uh, New Jersey will be fraught with peril. Yeah. I, I have uh, a lot of very interesting talents there, obviously some very gaping weaknesses, and I, I always encourage people to do that. Just throw them out there and say, all right, well, you're going to get me. How else are you going to have fun? How oh, else? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, all of us, when we first start role-playing, what do we want to do? We want to create a powerful character. 
It's a natural gamer tendency. It's a natural human tendency. But once you've played role playing for a while, you realize the most fun to be had is in a vivid character, an all the way out there character with with total extremes. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I think that uh, that's you know going to be a, a real interesting. A real interesting sort of deal. The more I'm thinking about it, all of a sudden, it, it sort of as we're talking here, the voice clip for me. The character isn't made until I have the voice uh, to to talk with. So I, I got yeah. something slapped down and ready for you, Mark. But we're not going to veil that now. You have to come back Sunday noon Eastern Sunday Standard Sunday time. Sunday Eastern Standard Time. Join us for I Am Zombie, see this character and another character wander around in that amazing ethereal space inside of Mark's mind, inside of our own minds, that collective ethereal space that is the gaming table, though it be shared from many, 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 many miles between us. Here we bring it to you live to share with you from the venue of Google+, Plus, which is amazingly uniting gamers the world over. Uh, thank Amen. you for being here. Amen. Props to the talk and Carney. Oh, yeah. Oh, there will be Carney. There this is where wrestling talk came from. Yeah, that's right. There will be Carney. There will be street talk. Gangsta talk. There will be uh, redneck talk. Oh, man, do I have just a smattering of colloquialisms, slang, and jargon to throw at you at a smorgasbord. Uh, I'm like, I'm going to be obfuscating my <laughs> language, my verbiage, and it's going to be uh, fantastic uh, to, to play. So I'm really jack stoked and full throttled with this character concept and idea. Uh, I'm going to be a bastard, but hopefully I'll be the bastard that you love. Um, and uh, thank you, Mark, for being here. Uh, anything else about about the cards, about the mechanics, about the creation that you would like to explain to the individuals watching at this point, Mark? Uh, just keep in mind that it, it definitely this is a this is a uh, a process, and uh, it's still ongoing. So things may radically change. I mean, I mean, even after the Kickstarter, I plan to have everyone who's part of Kickstarter play test it and test it. I, I want this to be a very polished, finalized system. Uh, at the same time, I really think I'm onto something here. Uh, I did spend, you know, ten years designing board games for nothing. I really think it was a subconscious attempt to really learn the language of, of board game rules, which I think are in some ways as game rules, not as not as storytelling devices, but as game rules, are much more advanced than role playing. And we're more advanced in storytelling, but board games are much more advanced in clever, sophisticated game rules that don't require a lot of thought and let your auntie and your best friend who's a stockbroker but doesn't play games and your neighbor who loves zombies and doesn't love games to come in and play the game with you, and uh, let's broaden the hobby, baby. Let's 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 make role playing live. It's really important. So that's it. I think that's the perfect words to leave it on. Role playing is very important. Think about that. <laughs>